right, welcome back, everybody. So this week is just sort of a shop talk of what's coming up in the in the coming weeks. Okay, we got Christmas and all that sort of stuff, and I'm a little bit behind on some of the testing stuff because I had some massive issues um, on a respray I did. Um, some issues with some product stuff, with some of the CIC stuff, some tin issues. Um, it just all went to crap. It was crazy, unbelievable. Um, but the good news is they're getting it worked out and we're going to get some of this stuff figured out. So hopefully, you know, we don't have this problem again. So the first thing I want to talk about is what's going on with the uh, Sherman Williams Kim Aqua. All right. So I want to address that. I'm going to address the Malaysi 2K in this. And then I'm going to talk about some of the other tests that I've got coming up. Okay. Um, so the Kim Aqua. So here's the deal, guys. Uh, a lot of guys have uh, been emailing me saying, hey, what's going on with this stuff? It's getting really hard to get. No store has it. Are they discontinuing it? So my thought was, was I'd heard rumors that the Kim Aqua was going to go away and that the, the Sayer Lack was going to kind of come in and take over that, that market. Um, I went to my local store and um, there was none in Nashville period, no Kim Aqua at all um, or any of the surrounding areas. So they sent me down to the uh, main facility, the chemical facility, and I talked with the facility's operation manager and she told me that no, they weren't discontinuing the Kim Aqua product and no, they weren't discontinuing the Sayer Lack product. She did say, however, that they have kind of, at least in Nashville, and I don't know about uh, where you're at, but they are no longer going to be carrying products in the stores as stock um, if there's not a minimum going out the door per month. So she didn't tell me exactly what that was, but I would assume if it's less than 10 gallons a month, um, they're probably not going to carry it. Okay, so if you're not doing 10 gallons worth of material, a month on a product um, or there's other people that are pulling that you know product in your area they're probably not going to stock it however you can still get it um, and it depends on where you're at in the country um, there's kind of two major facilities from what they told me that they're pulling the Kim Aqua from one of them's in Illinois for me and the other one is somewhere closer by here he didn't uh, they didn't tell me exactly um, but all you need to do is if you want these products, but here's the catch is like, you're either going to have to order it in five gallon or you're going to have to order it in a case, which is four gallons. Okay. Now the, the flat or the dull rub does only comes in five gallons, but I, I did a video not long ago showing that basically, uh, the dull rub is a satin. So if you really want a satin finish, you need the dull rub, um, if you want to get so like the medium rubs probably kind of like a 35 which is a higher a higher satin almost getting into a semi gloss for me personally um, so anyway that's the deal so the numbers on this stuff so what you would want to do um, is go to your local Sherry Williams and just say hey look I want to get the Kim Aqua product and they may look at you like you have five eyes and they never heard of it but if you'll take them these numbers they can order it, okay? Unless they don't want to for some reason, all right? Um, so the dull rub is T75F558. The medium rub is T75F557. And then there's a sealer that's T65F550. Now, most of you guys know that I prefer a vinyl sealer under my water base, um, mainly because of sanding issues and it's just faster um well it's probably about the same however i will tell you that when i do uh, montessori furniture which is all in natural maple um, they don't like for it to yellow they want to keep it as clear as possible so instead of using a sealer i actually um, cut the product about 20 percent 20 to 30 percent and I shoot that as my sealer, okay, thinned out. And the reason I do that is because it makes it a little bit easier to sand than if you just shoot it, you know, straight up. Now, some guys will actually, um, they'll shoot it, they'll shoot it full strength 
and let it just tack up and do like two coats back to back and that works really well but you got to let it dry pretty good and then you can really sand it really good and get it smooth and you can put two coats on and you're done so there's kind of lots of ways to do it um, whatever works for you is fine but I typically don't use water-based sealers um, because of the grain raising issues and it's a little bit harder to um, sand all right, so that's the deal with the Kim Aqua. If you want the Sayer Lac, you can look up those numbers as well, but that's going to be the similar uh, situation. It only comes in five gallon drums as well, um, from what I understand. Um, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I know for sure that the Kim Aqua is that way. All right, so I know guys have been asking me about the Malaysi. What's going on with the Malaysi? Okay, so I tested the Malaysi, um, not on video, but just myself, and I actually shot some of it out. Um, the issue with the product is, is if you're using a, a turbine system or even an HVLP system and you don't have a really nice gun like a Sato or a Nesta Wada or a DeVilvis, DeVilvis, sorry, let me say that correctly, like a really good, like, at least a $200, you know, really nice gun um, with a big needle. You're not going to be able to shoot this stuff out and make it look right. Okay. Um, my initial testing, I just, I, I doused it like 20% just to make it work. But that's way too much to have to thin a product. And when you thin a product like that, that much, you're going to have um, issues down the road with, um, the uh, durability okay it's like car finishes you know if you cut them it looks nice but you're gonna have you know durability issues down the road so usually I say no more than 15 to 20 percent 20 percent is really kind of pushing it so I will tell you that the product is super durable it is probably a little bit better than a solvent based conversion varnish um, from my testing, um, I was hoping that um, CIC used to have a 2K uh, water base that I've used on exterior doors before, but they have discontinued the product and it's very unlikely that they're going to bring it back because it just wasn't a big seller. Now, I've also recently tried to get the ML Campbell stuff. I'm working on that one. And I just talked to Greg today, and he's got a local company in California that has a product. It's actually a concrete um, paint, but it's a 2K product. And he's actually going to send me that because I really want to have that option because there's just a huge rise in 2K. I'm calling it the rise of 2K poly. Um, and what has happened is, is that at least here in Nashville, Pretty much anybody that was shooting a conversion varnish has now switched over to a 2K urethane. Okay, all the customers at HGH, I know the rep really well, and we talk a lot um, about this stuff. And he said he's got everybody switched over. And why are everybody switching over? A lot of people think it's because of the durability. That's part of it. But more importantly, it's the solid content. This stuff is crazy. I mean, it has over, um, I think, 50 to 60% solids. The Malaysi um, stuff is a two, it's a um, two coat system. So you're just cutting down on so much labor. Even with a conversion varnish, most guys were shooting at least three coats. Um, and then you had the sealer on top of that. Um, so you're cutting out a whole, a whole layer of system and you're getting a better product and it's $50 more a gallon. So the math just says that's the way to go, okay? So, you know, those, those products are running anywhere from 125 to 150 bucks a gallon. Um, now, um, Greg, actually, while we're talking about uh, 2Ks real quickly, um, he has one from PLC or PCL. I need to get that right. Um, that's an automotive grade that um, he's shooting um, out in California. So some of you guys might want to check that out. And I think it's a like it's either a 270, it's probably a 275 uh, VOC system. All right, so the Malaysi's coming. I just want to do a little bit more testing before I put it out there. 
Um, I may end up getting a better um, HVLP gun because the ones I have are just cheapos. Um, and I have the air assisted airless, which we're going to be talking about. And the one last thing that's coming up um, is a water based primer shootout. Um, I'm going to do the XIM, the uh, Zenzer, and the CIC, and we're going to look at those. Um, and we're going to do a water based shootout on all the most popular finishes. Now, there's some that have been creeping up into my radar Ilva, um, the Malaysia. I'm not putting it in this one. Um, and there's a few, uh, there's another guy up in Canada that contacted me. And then there's uh, green light coatings. I'm not doing that one either. But there's some, there's some other brands. But what we're going to tackle is we're going to do the Kim Aqua, the um, Sayer Lac, the ML Campbell Aguilante, the ML Campbell H2O. All right, and those are going to be grouped together. So there's four there. We're going to look at all those and kind of compare and contrast them because those are kind of like your pre-cat lacquers in water base. Okay, then I, I'm going to do one a shootout between the CIC and the Target Coatings conversion varnish. Now, even before I do the shootout, um, I want everybody to understand that, again, when I do this, I'm not bashing anybody's product. This is just for fun and just to see what out there, what's out there and to answer uh, questions because there's just not a lot of information about water base. And that's why I'm doing these videos um, was because I was encouraged by a lot of people, but we're gonna tackle the, the water base stuff. I know that someone is gonna find these water base shootouts and is gonna say, why didn't you do general finishes? I tested all their products about six years ago, every single one of them, and I had a massive issue uh, with one of them, and I really just didn't like the way that, the, that it got handled, and I just found out recently that the issue that was there six years ago is still there. So here's what I'll say about their products. Um, they shoot great. They look great. Um, my personal opinion is that they're overpriced for what you get. Um, and there are other comparable um, products on the market that are exactly the same product uh, pretty much that are half the cost. And I'll give you an example. The high performance and the polyacrylic are exactly the same. The only difference is is what they want 70 something dollars for the high performance and you can get the polyacrylic for what $45. Um, same thing with the Enduro VAR. The Enduro VAR is somewhere up in the 70 and 80 dollars a gallon and you can get the Minwax oil modified for $45 a gallon. Um, now I will throw this out there. If someone's willing to send me their products I'll do a shootout against these other products, but I don't. I think a lot of people are going to be disappointed because um, I'm just going to tell you up front that they're not even in the ball game. So anyway, so that's kind of the deal with the general finishes stuff. And again, I mean, if you're shooting, um, you know, uh, furniture and stuff for your own personal, you know house and stuff I, I think it's fine but if you're doing it on a professional level I just my personal opinion is is that it's just not there um, I will say that their milk paint is the bomb okay that product is awesome and they've got some other stuff out now that um, uh, that I haven't tried um, that may be that may be really good uh, anyway that's it for this week we'll catch you next time